Hello, I'm James Settlemeyer, the Senate Republican leader, and I have the privilege of speaking to you about Governor Sisolak's 2022 State of the State speech on behalf of the Republican members of the Nevada State Senate and Assembly here at the Legislative Building on the Senate floor. These past two years have created unprecedented challenges for Nevada. First, a global pandemic rocked our state, nation, and world, testing the limits of our government's abilities to serve and protect the public. Now our families are facing escalating inflation and skyrocketing increases in the cost of living with no end in sight. And our children have navigated the unthinkable as their schools shut down overnight and now face new challenges every day as staffing reaches critically low levels. In his speech, Governor Sisolak addressed many of these challenges as well as outlined his agenda leading up to and following the November election. But that agenda is reliant on the $6.7 billion Nevada has received in pandemic relief assistance from the federal government. This is one-shot money that has been used to balloon the size of our government and has contributed to the inflation and cost of housing increases, devastating to Nevada families. And it will be the bill that you, the residents of Nevada, will be on the hook for when the federal money is gone. The Republicans in the Senate and Assembly are committed to the unshakable beliefs of personal responsibility limited government spending, and individual freedoms over government infringement. As we work to find solutions as Nevada navigates the pandemic and the many new economic challenges facing our state. The COVID pandemic has shown us the many strengths and weaknesses of our state as we have navigated the unprecedented times. Among the strengths of our state are our people. Our essential services were never disrupted, including our public health and public safety as well as our groceries, pharmacies, and truck drivers who kept our stores stocked with those essential items and prescriptions throughout this pandemic. The pandemic also showed us the dangers of unrestricted emergency powers of the executive branch, which was more evident when businesses were closed with a stroke of a pin and mass mandates lingered on even when the science disagreed. The pandemic was also used as an excuse to limit public involvement in our very government by locking the doors of the legislative session and limiting your voices in public testimony. At the worst, our government faltered when our residents needed it most during the pandemic. When our state unemployment division collapsed under the extreme number of claims for unemployment benefits as a result of the government mandated business closures. The governor has so far relied on how Nevada will spend the $6.7 billion in pandemic relief assistance from the federal government. But spending money is not leadership. Leadership is about making our government more efficient and effective for the people. This money will be spent to grow the government size, but with no thought of how to fund that growth when the money is gone. But those new programs will continue, and this undisciplined spending is a contributing factor to the inflation and skyrocketing cost of living that is harming so many Nevadans. Nevada's economy is at a breaking point. Inflation and the rising cost of living are squeezing our families beyond their means. The cost to live in Nevada is quickly approaching that of California, where only a few short years ago, people were fleeing so they could afford the American dream in Nevada. Rising costs are impacting everyone. Families are having to make hard decisions at the grocery store because the cost of every single item in their carts is higher this week than it was last week. Neighbors are making hard decisions about where to live when their leases are coming up, expecting their costs for housing to increase by hundreds of dollars a month. Businesses that valiantly survived when the government required them to close their doors due to COVID are now failing because they can't find employees who can afford to work for what they can pay. But it's just not the economy that's in trouble. We can no longer afford to ignore our educational system and expect the problems to get better on their own. For many students, school is the one place they rely on to be safe and secure. But when the pandemic hit, schools were practically closed overnight, disrupting the lives of our state's youngest residents. Now that schools have reopened, our young people are still struggling, both academically and socially, to make up for those lost months. All in the name of public safety, we have a situation where violence, suicide, bullying are all soaring as our students have lost faith in the system that is supposed to be there for them. Even now, our children can't get away from the economic pressures when they wonder if their favorite teacher will quit over the weekend 
or if their bus will be on time due to staff shortages. Speaking of staff, our teachers have had to take on the roles of custodians to disinfect their classrooms and therapists and counselors to help their students navigate these challenges of the pandemic, both at school and at home. Just last week, Washoe County School District decided to rotate which schools will lose bus service each week. This year, the Clark County School District has had more than 6,000 school violence incidences. These are problems that are not being addressed. Schools feel unstable and unsecure, and this turmoil in education is leading to real-world consequences for students, teachers, and their parents. In my four years in the Assembly and 12 years in the Senate, I've never been more concerned about our state's future. I've always believed in transparency in our government, and I was disheartened to see the doors of the legislative building closed to the people we serve. I believe in cooperation. Sadly, for the previous two sessions, Republicans have been excluded from the conversation. With the Democrat majorities in both houses of the legislature, as well as the Democratic governor, there has been little interest in bipartisan solutions and little checks and balances. So few, in fact, that I, along with my Senate caucus Republican colleagues, went to the Nevada Supreme Court on behalf of the people of Nevada, where the judges agreed unanimously that you, Nevadans, were being taxed unconstitutionally. Rather than issue an apology, the Democrat legislative leaders looked for ways that they could keep the money that they unconstitutionally took. So now the question is at hand, where do we go from here? The COVID pandemic has not been easy and it has highlighted many areas where our state can and needs to do better. Governor Sislak may think that $6.7 billion from the federal government is enough to fix the state and he would be wrong. What we need is to move Nevada forward, is to reinvest in our people and our Nevada way of life. The pandemic has created an excuse for our government to infringe on our individual freedoms and expand on government spending beyond the means that we can support as a state. Instead, we need to be trusting our citizens, especially when it comes to their own health and safety as the pandemic cases subside. And we need to always be responsible for the tax dollars that have been entrusted to us. I believe in Nevada, and Nevadans deserve better than partisan politics. I also believe that Nevada will come through this time stronger than before. But that will require you, Nevadans, to take part in our government, your government. Send us a message in the November election. Contact your state representatives. Demand transparency in your government. Make your voices heard. May God bless you. God bless this nation, and may God bless the great state of Nevada. Thank you.